Hey guys, Roman here from Game Guides, and today I got for you my performance optimization guide for Arc Raiders. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the performance impact of every graphic setting inside of Arc Raiders, together with the visual impact that each setting has, so that you can get the best performance on your system without making the game look like crap. The system that I used for the benchmarks shown in this video are shown on screen right now, and most of the tests I performed inside of the practice range. As always, I'll start with Rebar or Resizable Base Address Register. This is a BIOS setting and essentially increases the amount of bandwidth between your CPU and your GPU. From my testing, with both all settings set to low and all the settings set to high, this had no measurable impact on the average performance of ARC Raiders, whereas the 1% lows might have been slightly higher. However, testing for 1% lows is super difficult, especially without a dedicated built-in benchmark. So take all of the 1% low measurements with a grain of salt. Still, my recommendation when it comes to ARC Raiders would be to enable this inside of the BIOS. If you don't know what Rebar is or how to enable it, check out the linked video in the card right now. Moving on to hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, which I tested with Rebar enabled, we can see that this boosts performance by another 8%. On the other hand, game mode doesn't appear to have either a positive or negative impact on performance, so depending on your situation with other games where this might actually help or be detrimental, you might want to turn it on or off, based on those other games. I also compared performance with the Game Ready Driver for Arc Raiders, which is the version 581.57, with the latest NVIDIA driver 581.80, and from this test you can see that the latest driver further improves upon the performance of Arc Raiders. And with that, let's hop into the game and talk about the performance and visual impact of every setting. For the window mode, I wasn't able to observe a difference in terms of the averages, 1% lows or the latency, whether or not I choose borderless full screen or full screen exclusive. As the game itself suggests to use borderless full screen and because this allows us to alt tap faster out of the game, this would be also my recommended setting. NVIDIA frame generation boosts performance by 40%. Now the way that this technology achieves this boost in performance is by waiting for two consecutive frames to be rendered on the GPU and then inserting an AI generated frame in the middle. For that reason you'll always increase latency when using this technology. However, since Arc Raiders is no competitive first person shooter, I would argue that the improvement in perceived smoothness of the game is more important than the slight additional input latency that this causes. So for the smoothest experience, you can enable this option, whereas if you like to have the lowest latency, then leave this disabled. VSync you'll only want to enable if you experience any screen tearing, and in this example we are using the high preset in order to get below the monitor's refresh rate, showing you that the increase in input latency is not that big. However, with everything on low, you can see that the increase in latency is much greater. So just keep that in mind, if you generally get higher performance than your monitor's refresh rate, using VSync is significantly increasing your latency. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency is doing a fantastic job inside of Arc Raiders in order to reduce your system latency, which in this example is reduced by 10 milliseconds, while only dropping performance by roughly 2%. So clearly, if you're GPU bound, then definitely enable Reflex Low Latency, whereas if you're CPU bound, then set it to On Plus Boost. For this next section, I'm going to separate anti-aliasing from upscaling, or to be more precise, I'll use the upscalers at the native resolution to achieve anti-aliasing. With this, we have a whole host of different options available for anti-aliasing, with temporal anti-aliasing coming with the lowest performance impact and TSR having the highest impact. The CNN model of DLSS, or DLAA in this case, produces the second lowest drop in performance, whereas the transformer model, so essentially DLSS4, FSR free and XSS all come with roughly a 13% drop in performance. By the way, without any anti-aliasing, the game looks absolutely ridiculous, and this is especially bad for characters' hair, and generally any fine details look super pixelated without anti-aliasing. I'll start with TAA and TSR, the least and most performance intensive temporal anti-aliasing method, and from this you can see that TAA is horribly pixelated while at the same time being super blurry, and additionally TAA has horrible fringing behind moving objects. This fringing is much improved upon with TSR and there is also no weird pixelation going on, however this anti-aliasing method also makes the game a bit blurry. Next let's compare the two DLAA methods with the transformer model being the new DLSS4 implementation and the CNN model being DLSS3. 
Clearly, the Transformer model is a lot sharper compared to the CNN model, and the CNN model also introduces more fringing around fast-moving objects. However, even with the Transformer model, we still get this kind of trailing edges like behind the little flanks, and the kind of telltale sign that the LSS is running is also visible with the Transformer model showing these strokes around objects. Also, the Transformer model has a bit higher performance impact, however, I would still recommend it over CNN because it's just a lot sharper. Next, let's compare all of the different upscalers that kind of make sense in my opinion to use, where we can see that TSR and FSR are super unstable, so we have a lot of shimmering going on, whereas DLAA and XCSS are a lot more stable, but comparing those two, we can see that DLAA is definitely a lot sharper. In terms of fringing, I would say that XCSS is the worst offender, followed by FSR and then finally DLAA, with the least amount of fringing on TSR. Overall, my recommendation would be, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, to use DLAA, and if you have an AMD GPU, to use XCSS. If so far you've got any value from this video, then I would appreciate a like and a comment down below to help with the visibility of this video, and of course if you want to see more videos like this also for other games, then hit that juicy subscribe button. As for the different upscalers, we have quite a lot of options, so let me go through this real quick, starting with TSR in the resolution scaling levels that we would usually observe, ultra performance, performance balanced and quality preset for which performance increases between 44 and 13%. As this is a temporal anti-aliasing option, everything is super blurry, and even if we increase the anti-aliasing setting inside of the game, we won't be able to achieve better results. As this upscaler becomes super blurry once you start moving, I would personally recommend against using TSR. The LSS3, or the CNN model of the LSS, boosts performance between 15 and 38%, so pretty comparable to TSR, and from a visual standpoint we can see that the image is a bit sharper compared to TSR. On ultra performance and performance we get a bit of flickering inside of the bushes, which is no longer visible on balanced and quality. Interestingly, we're not getting an awful lot of fringing with the LSS3, but that's likely because overall the image quality is very poor anyways. The LSS4, or rather the Transformer model of the LSS, is a bit more performance intensive, so the upscaling performance gains are only between 8 and 27%. Visually this is super stable, so we don't have any flickering or any sizzling, but unfortunately moving objects leave a trail behind. When switching between the two DLSS models, we can see that the Transformer model is much sharper. If only there was no smearing behind fast moving objects, then this would be the perfect upscaler. Frankly, I would still choose the Transformer model because of the sharpness of the image. FSR 3 boosts performance by 14-40%, to 40%, so it's a lot more than the LSS 4. However, visually, this introduces an enormous amount of flickering and shimmering on fine objects. For this reason, I basically simply cannot recommend FSR 3 inside of Arc Raiders. XESS has a few more presets to select from and boosts performance between 0% with the Ultra Quality Plus preset, and 26% with ultra performance. Visually this produces a relatively stable presentation, except for ultra performance and balanced, which are the quality presets ultra performance and performance for another upscaler in terms of the resolution that is used, and from this we can see that those two presets still have a bit of shimmering on fine objects, but the other ones are relatively stable. Overall the image is mostly sharp and there isn't an awful lot of fringing. When quickly switching through all of the different upscalers, we can see that TSR, FSR and the CNN model of the LSS are all very blurry. So once again, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, I would recommend the LSS in the quality preset. And if you have an AMD GPU, use XCSS at the ultra quality preset. Moving on to the graphics section, here you can see the performance impact of choosing a different field of view. As with many other modern games, you can see that the lowest performance is obtained at the lowest FOV. Reason for that is that these games are usually heavily optimizing the render count of different elements in game when increasing the field of view, which counteracts the reduction in performance by having a higher FOV. So my suggestion would be to use the highest field of view of AT. Motion blur you absolutely want to disable, this will make you dizzy and won't make you a good shooter inside of Arc Raiders. Under ray tracing we have NVIDIA RTX Global Illumination and I'm actually not sure what happens if you don't have an RTX GPU if you just have the Global Illumination option static, but regardless on an RTX GPU you'll get the option between static and dynamic Global Illumination. Performance wise low to high reduce performance by a bit more than 10% and epic reducing performance by 20%. 
Now, when we compare the global illumination methods, we can see that especially the low dynamic setting has a lot of light bleeding, making this a very poor choice. This problem mostly seems to be resolved if you select anything above dynamic medium. And honestly, I think the difference between medium to epic is only very small. Generally, static can look a bit out of place and a bit flat in some situations, and in other situations it basically looks as good as epic. As in most cases, static looks even better than dynamic low, and because dynamic global illumination comes with such a high performance impact, I would recommend to leave this on static. On the quality, we have the view distance, which doesn't have a massive impact on performance on low and medium, with a slightly more noticeable reduction in performance on epic. This option affects the LOD or the level of detail of different objects in the world and the distance at which an object is rendered at all. This is super annoying because with a low view distance setting you will get a lot of pop-in of different objects of rocks, of trees and assets in the game, which makes the game look very unpleasant. On high the object pop-in is less noticeable but it's still there and for this example here it only really disappears on the epic preset. So if you do have a bit of performance to spare, I personally would put it into the view distance setting because I really think that this pop-in of different objects is very distracting. However, if you need to get the highest possible performance, then set this to high. Unsurprisingly, shadows introduce a quite modest reduction in performance inside of arc raiders, with medium reducing performance by 2%, high by 7% and epic by 13%. These settings affect the visual quality of the game in multiple ways, for once, on the low setting there are no player shadows and a lot of object shadows are also missing, and with medium, high and epic, shadows become higher resolved. On the other hand, we can see that the shadow quality setting actually also affects lighting, and in this example here we actually get better lighting inside when setting shadow quality to high. For this reason, I would actually recommend you guys to set shadow quality to high in order to avoid having some areas of the map being unlit, making visibility in them very difficult. Post-processing also comes with a significant reduction in performance, and the primary effect that this setting has is to introduce ambient occlusion into the game. Unfortunately, the ambient occlusion implementation is rather poor and leads to sizzling or flickering inside of bushes regardless of the upscaler filter that is used. Besides introducing shadows around bushes and around shrubs, we can see that this also introduces a lot of shadows around rocks and of course around the player. As this makes the game look super unstable, I would definitely recommend to leave post-processing on low. Texture quality in this game only affects the anisotropic filtering as well as ground textures, so it's unlike any other game where you can actually reduce the amount or the quality of textures inside of the game, and therefore this also does not have a significant impact on performance. Likewise, I found that the effect on the memory usage is also rather small. Visually, we can see that the anisotropic filtering indeed works well, so setting this to medium makes textures viewed at a very shallow angle look much sharper, and we can also see that we get less pop-in on the ground when we set the texture quality to a higher preset. Because of that, my recommendation would be to set textures to high. Effects have quite a significant impact on performance in Arc Raiders, with reductions up to 90% going up to the epic preset. This affects various aspects of the game, for one the skybox is filled with higher resolution clouds, ground textures interestingly also have higher resolution and you get this kind of smearing effect between two different ground tiles, the embers on the starter maps are more numerous on epic and shiny objects appear more shiny on the epic preset. On the other hand, particles emitted by explosions and the smoke effects from explosions look absolutely identical with effects on low and epic. Due to the super high performance impact and because the upgrade in visual fidelity is only very small, I would recommend to leave this on low. Next we have reflection quality, which doesn't have a massive impact on performance in Arc Raiders. And from this we can see that on the low preset only the cube map reflections are used, which are very ugly. So I would definitely recommend to set this at least to medium. And another reason why I would recommend to set it to medium is that on low we get this kind of weird halo around certain objects that are kind of glossy that make the game look overall very cheap. Beyond medium, I don't think that the improvement in visual fidelity of the reflections is worth the additional reduction in performance. For foliage, I found that the medium preset comes with roughly the same performance as low and then high-end epic reduced performance by only about 3%. 
In fact, I would actually not call this foliage quality, but instead just undergrowth quality, because it only affects shrubs and bushes on the ground. So any larger trees are completely unaffected by this setting, and their quality is only affected by the view distance setting. Interestingly though, when increasing foliage, we find more numerous rocks on the ground, and this somehow also affects tree branches on the ground. For this setting, I would recommend to have it on medium for the best performance, or on high for a bit of an upgrade in visual quality. Finally, the global illumination resolution had a massive impact on performance, while at the same time being absolutely impossible to distinguish, so absolutely make sure to leave this on low. And with that, let me quickly go through my best recommended settings for Arc Raiders. Window mode set to full screen borderless. Enable frame generation for smoother gameplay or disable this for better latency. Only enable VSync if you have any screen tearing and turn on Nvidia Reflex Low Latency. Leave the frame rate on unlimited and leave the resolution at 100%. I personally prefer to use Nvidia DLSS DLAA with the Transformer model. But if you need an uplift in performance, then either use DLSS with the Transformer model in the quality preset or use XDSS at ultra quality. Fill the view, have at 80 and disable motion blur. Global illumination you can leave on static and set the view distance either to high or if you can spare a bit of performance, set it to epic. And the aliasing has no effect on DLSS or XDSS, so you can leave it on low. Shadows I would highly recommend to set to high in order to improve visibility in dark buildings, but if it's too demanding then leave it on medium. Post processing leave on low in order to avoid introducing ugly ambient occlusion into the game, which makes vegetation look very sizzly. Texture set to medium or high, leave effects on low, the reflections I would recommend on medium, foliage also on medium or on high if you have a bit of performance to spare, and finally, leave global illumination resolution on low. But that wraps it up for today. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like and increase this video's engagement by putting in comment down below to tell the algorithm that this video has been worthwhile. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.